decades before social media sites like Facebook, Reddit, and 4chan, there was the 75 meter amateur band. It's a mix of radio techies, excitable geezers, preppers, stackers, and a few people chasing the X. And then there are the jammers, stations running amok with sweeping VFOs, obscenities, insults, warbling sounds, and white noise, and music. This particular jammer is sweeping his VFO across this conversation trying to annoy the people here. They don't seem to mind, in fact they're joking about him. They have strong signals and modern equipment. They're actually able to filter this guy out. They're making jokes about intestines, anal discharge, disembowelment. So they're not too bothered, they think it's funny. Pompous clowns. Imagine you on November 4th. You don't know how the election's going to turn out, so don't be cocky. OMG, OMG. You might have to move out to the left coast. Yeah, you might have to move to Argentina. The rest of the Nazis and far-right fascist mofos. Did you catch some of the footage, uh, Joe? Uh, Mike, or excuse me? Well, let's leave that jammer on 3844 and move up to 3860. Here is a music jammer. This person shows up many evenings on 3860, sometimes up or down the band where he can find his rivals and jam them with music, noise, laughter, clucking sounds, and a few insults. We're going to use a network of Kiwi SDR sites and the TDOA extension to geolocate this station within a few kilometers. The TDOA method of geolocation has previously been expensive and therefore used mostly by governments and large corporations. Recently, the Kiwi SDR sites have added this capability as an extension, and it works great. The receivers need to be located accurately, have precise tuning, and also precise time. All of these come from the GPS augmentation on the Kiwi SDR sites. For every pair of stations that you use, you get a line of position on the map. It's a hyperbolic curve, and with multiple pairs of receivers, you get several lines that all converge on the most likely location of the transmitter. We need pairs of receivers because what we do is measure the arrival time of the signal. And for differences in arrival time, there are differences in path distance. If your time is accurate, if you understand the propagation, if your location is known, those variables can be refined to the point where the location of the transmitter is known pretty accurately. For HF signals, pretty accurately means plus or minus a few kilometers. So here we're starting to go into the extensions on the Kiwi SDR site. Click on the TDOA extension. And then wait for the panel to come up. And in that panel there are places to add receivers to a list. There's a map that can be used to select receivers shows time of day, whether there's daylight or nighttime in a certain geographical area. It's all very nice. So here's the map. Go to one of the gray markers, hover over it, and a set of receiver sites show up in blue. You make your choices of receivers 
from among those blue markers on the map. Ideally, what you're going to do is choose receivers that surround the suspected transmitter location. And those receiver sites should be either in ground wave distance or within one hop considering the propagation on that frequency at that time. There's too much uncertainty for multi-hop reception. You really need to know generally where the transmitter is, understand the propagation, which means the frequency, the time of day, the season, etc. You pick your receiver sites that are close enough. Up on the higher frequencies, 20 meters for example, there might be a limit on how close you can be because frequently there's a skip zone up there and you're only going to receive backscatter, which is not accurate at all. So here we have a group of six receivers added to the list. There are two that are not suitable because they're either not getting enough GPS updates or the channels are already in use by other users. But let's see what we get just using four of those six. It takes a few minutes for the computer to sample the frequency and then start running the algorithm, which measures the time difference and it'll then run the equations and determine the most likely location of the transmitter. Here we have one located at north 49.8 West 79.2, not good. Our specific problem is that the K3FEF and W1EQX servers were not used. What we can do is replace those two with other receiver sites where we can get recent GPS updates and also available channels and then try again. All right, here's another try at getting a location. Notice that the line of position, or area of position, if you want to call it that, in green, it all tends to converge and pass through an area of upstate New York. The concept of garbage in, garbage out also applies. You do want to surround the suspected transmitter location with good receiver sites. You won't get good geometry if all of the receivers are in one line or you have a cluster on one side of the map and another cluster on the other side of the map. You need to surround the suspected transmitter site and have those receivers separated geographically. So with another receiver site added in, but still not very good geometry, 
We'll run the algo again. Notice that we do need a bit of patience to wait for the sampling time and then the computations on the received data. Location North 41.75, West 70.35. That's a very large area of uncertainty. Again, it's because the receivers are not arranged around the target, but instead are arranged in a line. Those yellow markers on the map are the receiver sites. So we'll add more sites and try again. Encircle the target, stay within one hop distance considering propagation. So we'll cut out a couple of them and replace them. Now we have a site down in Maryland. The sampling clock appears in blue. See it's gradually winding clockwise. We're now about three quarters of the way through the sampling period. Sampling is almost finished. There it is. Number crunching is in progress. And we have a new location, north, 42.7, west, 74.2. That's interesting. This is definitely a better result. Once again, we're looking into upstate New York. That is just a short drive southwest of Schenectady. That's pretty country. It's the eastern Mohawk Valley on the northern edge of the Catskill Mountains. Here's a brief look at the S band being transmitted by that station. Let's do another round of TDOA measurements on that music jammer. We'll try a different set of receiving sites. Once again, encircle the target, pick sites with one hop propagation, pick sites with plenty of GPS fixes. We move over a gray marker. Available receivers will show up in blue. Pick several receivers.
Well, my man Greg, if it feels good, good. Notice that propagation is starting to change a bit, and we're beginning to hear a net that's operating on 3860. Those stations tend to not be in the northeast. Most of them are in the south and southwestern parts of the USA. But this guy on 3860 still tries to jam them. Most of the people on that net are a bunch of preppers and stackers. They gather on 3860 to discuss the price of gold, and stacking their gold, storing away dried food for doomsday, and they're very proud of their weapons. The jammer is a bit nuts. I mean, these folks are just like the internet. There are so many you can't troll and jam them all. Why bother, right? Anyhow, back to radio work. The list still is not good enough. Start over and rebuild a list with better servers. Geolocating this person is going to take several tries. Those people underneath this music, they're a bunch of right-wing boomer brown shirts. A lot of similar folks are on groups and nets up and down the band, pissing and moaning about how hard it is to live in a free country. It's not surprising that they attract jammers. Still, jamming is against the regs. This person is creating a nuisance for other users. There's no reason we couldn't have other people up in Maine or New England using the frequency. It's low or moderate power. Enjoying the amateur bands without this music crapping on the frequency. Okay, let's try again with a different group of receivers. You can see the sites marked in yellow. Location North 42 decimal 8 West 75 decimal 4. Once again, we're looking into upstate New York. This time the result is a little bit west of the earlier location. It's still within driving distance from the Utica, Rome, or Albany, Schenectady areas. It's just a little bit farther west in the Mohawk Valley. Yeah, this guy's funny. He's complaining about a station. I don't think that it's the same one that's doing the jamming. He's complaining about WW2, WW. Or is it WW2RW? Given a different set of phonetics for that call sign. There's a guy who claims to be from Canada who shows up on this frequency causing trouble, but he's not really in Canada. Okay, 
like a heat rise, you know that there, but I hold in on that dipole stretching from my so where the fuck is that going to do? And then I throw it in across the street, just hook up into a great big old tree tall tree, about 50 feet high. Yeah, the stackers and preppers are also noticing. <laughs> they said, hey, it sounds like that guy up in Canada who's not really in Canada. Well, at any rate, there it is. You have seen geolocation using the internet-based Kiwi SDRs.